Hey guys, this is Rich from Rich City Live, and I can't get over what happened to Bruce Linton. I honestly can't get over it. I'm still in shock. Um, the biggest guy in the cannabis sector, the number one CEO in the entire sector, the biggest company in the entire world of cannabis. And this man is the one who built it. And he gets fired? He started to build the company in 2013. He built it with his own blood, sweat, and tears. And he ends up getting fired. Something's not right. Something's not adding up. It doesn't make sense. Why would this happen? These are questions that are running through my mind right now, and I'm sure they're running through your mind, so I thought we might as well just go live and talk about it. I'd like to have an open discussion. I'd like to take some calls. I'm totally free right now. I'm mind-boggled by this news. It's breaking news everywhere, and I can't get past it. I just can't get past it. I can't. The biggest, best cannabis company in the world with the best CEO, the guy who's raised more money than anybody in the sector, the guy that has all the contacts, the guy with the best reputation, the guy that's built more shareholder equity for his shareholders than any other company. And he gets fired. He goes to Constellation Brands. They write him a check for $5 billion. Good morning, Amanda. Amanda, why don't you call me? Why don't you call me? I'd like to talk this out. I want to take calls. I want to take calls because I think this is the biggest event in the cannabis sector in a very long time. Amanda. Good morning. Good morning. What time is it for you right now? 7.55 a.m. I took the day off work today. So oh, wow. The big thing is going on. Yeah. So, so oh, man. Room. Okay. Did you did you see his interview with BNN? Yes. Honestly, he's choked. Like I can't. I watched it twice. <laughs> that was the first thing I saw when I woke up. I watched it twice. I'm just mind blown. What do you think? Like, what do you think happened here? What do you think really happened here? I want to know your opinion. What really happened here? <laughs> I'm still processing this. I'm still processing. I really don't know what the hell happened here. All I'm thinking so far is this is just pure greed. They didn't like that this man created this masterpiece um, is owning everything. And I think they just really wanted to get rid of him. This is greed. He has a huge controlling interest in it and i think they wanted to just take over this empire and so in the dirtiest of ways they shot him out and i mean he's not even on the board anymore but was it really dirty was it think. was it really dirty okay so this is the way it works you know he builds up a company he ends up partnering with a giant the giant says we're going to give you five billion dollars and we have the option for more and he says okay well that five billion dollars is going to give us the ability to grow well, now he gets to the point where he's spending more than they want. And maybe he's a little bit more long-term. And they're thinking, we want to make money right now, Bruce. And he's like, yeah, but you know what? We got to spend to be the best. And they're like, you know what? But we also got to make money along the way. So I think what happened here, he brought them in because he needed the money. And it was the money that he brought in that got rid of him. So it was because of his aggressiveness to get so big he essentially yeah. he essentially ran a coup on himself because he was so 
He was so aggressive to grow internationally. He wanted the money, which means he had to give up a piece of his company. But in doing so, he gave up so much control, so much voting power, so much, such a big piece of the company that he lost control of his own company. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. A hundred percent. hundred percent. Um, I do think he pissed some people off along the way, but one thing he said in that interview that I still need to look a little more into, well, he said so much in there that I'm still processing, but first of all, he's like, you can't build an empire like this and not upset some people along the way. hundred percent. And you know that firsthand, right? You're always going to, not everyone's going to like what you have to say. But he did say, like, yeah, we just had these big losses. And they're taking a lot of slack for that. And I think them getting rid of him right now is their way to say, oh, look, this isn't going to keep happening. We just put it all on Bruce's head. Because there's always going to be a man who has to take the fall. But the thing is, but the thing is, you just got rid of the number one guy in the cannabis sector. He is the guy. Everybody recognizes Bruce as the number one guy in the cannabis sector. He's like the leader. He's the guy. He's got all the contacts. He's got all the relationships. I'm sure he's got a hundred cannabis companies offering them anything he wants right now to be a part of those companies. So why make this move? Like, I I see the greed factor, but you just took a guy that was leading the number one most successful company in the cannabis sector. One of the most, you know, he made a good comment. They've hired more people than Amazon. He mentioned all these top companies, like they were growing faster than some of the biggest companies in the world. He was successfully building shareholder equity. In the last two and a half years, we personally been talking about the stock go from $5 to 70 bucks. And it's still at $53 today. So he made shareholders money. He made board members money. He made people rich. But the mistake he made is that he was too aggressive to grow. So he gave up too much control for money so that he could grow. And what these guys did, which I think is a very smart move for them, but I also think is a very stupid move. I think they planned this from day one. I think they said, you know what? We want to take over one of these companies. We don't want to be like a sidekick. We're a billion dollar company. We're Constellation Brands. Who the hell is, who the hell is Bruce Linton? I think this was their plan from day one. He was coming into this thinking, oh yeah, you know, like let's be friends. They're getting into this going, no, no, no. Because he said, he goes, they made a very bold move. They gave us $5 billion. Now, was that bold? Or was that actually a genius move by them? Because essentially now they control this multi $20 billion market cap company that's in how many countries? 16 countries, 4,000 employees. It's a global powerhouse. And now they own it and it only costs them $5 billion to take control over this company. And he's got, he's got what? He's got 18 million shares. So he's got a billion dollars worth of stock almost. So they're sitting there going, come on, Bruce. We gave, we gave you 5 billion. You weren't making it work. You were losing money. You've got a billion dollars worth in stock. Just sit back now, go and do what you got to do and just enjoy the ride. Uh, Yeah. And you know, that's the thing is because he has all this stock, he's not going to, he's not going to be, there's not going to be a full disclosure on how this went down because he doesn't want the stock to go down. He's heavily invested still. Right. I mean, he's got cash that he still stands to make for the rest of his life. So he's not going to trash them. So they got him by the balls there for sure. But I don't know. I think they just took this last quarter as a, as a good reason to say, oh, you know what? Someone has to take the fall for these losses. Nobody's thinking about it in the way that you and I talked about it. And, you know, you have to lose money to make money. It has to get worse before it gets better. They were just like, oh, here's an opportunity. You take the fall. We look better that we got rid of you. It must have been your fault. And let's move forward. I don't know. Ah. Well, <laughs> I think it's the biggest news in the sector, like, since the sector started. Michael. Because this is the guy. Yeah. Like the first guy I ever watched talk about cannabis companies was Bruce Linton, you know, to watch him talk today about the fact that Constellation Brands made a comment about the losses and he didn't like that comment. He made it very clear when she asked him on BNM Bloomberg, you know, if he agreed with that comment, he said no. And he said, I wouldn't have made that comment. 
So he didn't like the fact that they publicly denounced his ability essentially to run the company. And then they had a board meeting where they pretty much ousted him from his position as the, you know, co-CEO. So he realizes, I'm sure he realizes at this point he made a mistake. However, even though he was ousted, he still spoke very eloquently about the company. He still said that he believes the stock is going to go up in multiples. And he referred yeah. to legalization of cannabis in America 2020 and an election year, which makes me believe that we've got about a year of really exciting things that are coming. Um, about you know 16 months of really exciting catalysts that are coming between edibles legalization coming here in Canada in three and a half months, and then a election year coming in about 18 months, 18 months or less in America. So all these catalysts are coming. He believes that the company is going to continue to go up. He also talked about Martello and was actually wearing a Martello t-shirt while he was doing, while he was doing his BNN interview and he referred to rivers and he referred to acreage. So I believe he is no longer involved in any of those companies. I believe he has a stake and probably shares in all of them, but I still feel like he wants to see them succeed because he has shares in every one of these companies. Exactly. That's what I said. That's why I don't think there'll be full disclosure on the whole story. So, I mean, it's left. We're just going to, you know, ponder over what happened, but I don't think there'll ever be a full disclosure because yeah, he's heavily invested. He wants to see it go up because that's his, that's his cash. You know, I don't, I don't want to see them go down either. But could you so, just, could you just imagine building a company for six years? building it to become a $20 billion market cap company, the largest global recognized leader in cannabis in the world. You're the leader, you're the founder. And then one day the guys that you brought in to help you get enough money so you can grow, say, you know what? You're spending too much of our money. And he's like, well, the only reason why you're in here is because you brought us money. That's our money. And they're sitting there going, no, 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 this is, this is our money. And he's going, I thought it was our money. Like we're a team. Well, no, you're no, no longer part of this team, Bruce. Yeah, and he's off the Rivers board as well, right? Did they know it? Like, but you know what, though, I have to say, what I've been thinking for the last hour is I'm stoked to see where he ends up because that's going to be next level as well. Well, did you notice that so, he mentioned that he's no longer allowed to work in Canada? So I'm sure he has some type of a non-compete in Canada for a certain amount of years. So he made it very clear yeah, that he... He made it very clear that he can't do any business in Canada. So he'll be doing business internationally and that he would be willing to work with a whole bunch of companies. So I wow. think he's like a free agent now. He's a billionaire and he's going to be yeah. flying around internationally and working with all the international cannabis companies that he can work with because he can't do any business in Canada now, clearly because they want Canopy Growth to be the leader. And if he's competing with Canopy Growth, they're concerned that, you know, he's the guy who built it. So clearly he has all the, he has all the, he has all the tools. He has all the relationships. He has all the connections. They're very concerned about, about him coming back and building another company to rival potentially Canopy Growth. And I would be concerned if I was them too, because what does, Can what does Constellation Brands really know about the cannabis sector? Yeah, no, hell of a lot. They're an average company. <laughs> you know? No, no, no. They, they, don't. they so, don't. So as an investor, do you like Canopy Growth now? Yeah, I still do. I'm, <laughs> I know there's going to be a lot of mixed concerns on that. But yeah, I still do. Only because they've already made their footprint. They've already made their footprint. and But they um, made their footprint. But they, hold on. They made their footprint. They're losing money. Their cost per gram is terrible. Do they really have a footprint or is it a bunch of, or is it a bunch of smoke and mirrors? Because I'll be honest with you. Um, I haven't heard great reviews of any of cannabis uh, products from Canopy Growth. I haven't, I have not heard great reviews about Canopy Growth's products. I I'll be honest with you. They're not, I don't know. I don't know. They're losing money. Maybe this might've been the best thing that ever happened for Bruce. Maybe well, the market responded in your opinion last night or yeah, today. I guess it's today. Um, yeah, the market responded in your opinion 100 percent 
I don't know. It's it's weird. It's weird. Like the stock went up today. The, the stock initially went down on the news and then it went up. And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, how does the stock go up after news like this? Other than the guys behind Constellation Brands are saying, guys, we got to buy the stock up right now because we can't create a panic. Yeah, fair enough. Either that or some people are just like, oh, well, it must have been Bruce's fault that there was money lost. So, you know, maybe they'll do better. And then they bought in. So it really could have went either way. Personally, I'm not in it right now. Um, I haven't been in it for well, over since April. I've been out since April and I had plans to buy in this week, but I didn't. I don't know. Instincts just said wait and I didn't know why, but now I know. <laughs> so I think it's a wait and see. It's a wait and see. A lot of a lot of people are saying that Canopy is a buy, including Jim Cramer. And I'm sitting here thinking, are you just saying that because you own it? You know, like yeah, I'm guarantee. trying to, I'm trying to figure out if it really is a buy. I, I, I can't see how you get rid of Michael Jordan, Wayne Gretzky, Phil Jackson, Michael Phelps, the leader in the industry, the most successful guy in the industry. He has created more millionaires than anybody else in the sector. You get rid of him and you're better the next day? I don't buy it. I don't see how you're better the next day. Unless there's something about him we don't know. And maybe there's something about him that they do know. Maybe he had some bad habits. I don't know. Maybe there's something behind the scenes that they didn't like. That they saw about him that we don't know. But, man, this is the guy that is the leader in the entire sector he's the guy that led the charge in this entire cannabis sector for the last six years took a little company from smith falls ontario and turned them into a 20 billion dollar market cap company 16 countries 4,000 employees relationships with so many great brands and companies yeah they've been yeah. losing money yeah they've made mistakes but this is the guy that built that and now you just get rid of him you throw him to the street I really think it depends on what he left behind. Like, there's still, like, you have to think that, I mean, behind the scenes, like, he was the face, he was the face of the company, but I think there's still, there's got to be, in every company, there's a teamwork process, right? So he had to have left something behind so that they feel that they can pave this way better. Because what idiots would they look like if they get rid of him and then still go downhill? Like, they'll just look like fools. They, there's no way that they can do that to themselves. But I don't know. <laughs> it's like so I'm just mind blown like honestly that's why I told you I watched that interview twice and I'm probably gonna watch it again like I'm just I'm mind blown like he said he was sad he said he was sad you know he built this company up unless he's the best actor in the world and this was planned he looked disheartened he looked yeah, like he lost his heart. <laughs> they took his yeah. heart, you know? He built this company from scratch to be this global number one giant. He tried so hard to make them number one, and they just took it from him and said, you know what? We don't need you anymore. We can do this without you. I don't see how they do it without him. He has all the blueprints. He has all the connections. He has all the relationships. Unless he did such a good job that it's a turnkey business and he was just flying around doing nothing and just doing interviews. And maybe they thought, you know what, we can replace him with somebody else. Maybe that's the case. I honestly don't know, but man, I just can't see how you take Michael Jordan, how you take Wayne Gretzky, how you take Kawhi, Kawhi Leonard off the Raptors and they become better the next day. I just don't see it. I don't get it. Like, why wouldn't they keep them in some capacity? Why would they just why would they just get rid of rid of him completely? So like the next day, the same day, he's out there doing interviews and the whole world is looking at these guys like, "Wow, you guys are pretty you guys are pretty evil." You know, like you guys just cut his throat. You guys just took his heart, cut his throat, left him for dead. Like there what one day he's the guy running the company, the next day he's not. Like it's over for Bruce, man. This is no longer yeah. his company. Uh, yeah, he still owns shares. Yeah, he's going to be a billionaire regardless. But man, oh man. You know, I don't know how I feel. It's like, honestly, the only thing I can think of is like one day, Rich TV Live becomes, you know, five years from now, Rich TV Live becomes this global giant. We're a billion dollar company. I partner with some guys that give us billions of dollars. And then one day they say, you know what, Rich? We don't want you hosting the show no more. We got somebody else. Well, that's what happened. That's what happened to Bruce. 
I know, but uh, it also, I don't, uh, it's so tough. Like, part of me thinks maybe they did just have him as the PR man. Like, maybe they just had him as the face. Like, that's how they, that's what part of me thinks is that, you know, they all own the blueprint and that they make him, you know, the fall man. Because there's always going to be a fall man when you're taking slack, especially from a company like this. Well, Frank, I, kinda, I think we wanted to be the fall man. Frank is saying that he sold the company to save Canopy or they would have went bankrupt. Well, I think I don't think Canopy was ever going to go bankrupt. I think he yeah. was aggressively spending money to be first. They were looking at it like, hey, we already got this big company. We're making 90 million a quarter. Why don't we, you know, scale it back a little bit? I think he was thinking, no, 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 we need to keep going because there's competition. So we got to keep spending. We got to keep growing. And I honestly think it could have been this acreage deal. I think this acreage deal could have done it for him because look at it this way. He goes and takes a huge risk with acreage. He goes and puts 300 million cash up front for shareholders of acreage to get paid. And the deal doesn't get done until cannabis is legal in America. So technically, the deal's already done. The deal's already done, but it's contingent on legalization. And if legalization doesn't happen, then they just lost three hundred million in cash and how much stock on a deal that never happens. Yeah, but still, I don't think they can. I mean, the shareholders voted on that. You know, everybody knew it's at stake, and they still said yes. So, no, I know, but that's no, what I the don't. shareholders. That's what the shareholders did. Maybe Constellation Brands didn't like that move. Maybe they thought it was too risky. Maybe they, they thought, you know what? This guy took $5 billion of our money and now he's just throwing it to the dogs. And there's a lot of stuff. And I'm going to tell you guys right now. I know a lot of guys on the street, okay? There's been a lot of crops that have been burnt. Canopy has burnt a lot of money trying to be first. Millions and millions of dollars of crops. $25 million at a time of crops of being burnt because they were trying to be first. And there's been a lot of guys on the street that have been telling me that Canopy is going to fail. For years, while Canopy has been growing, people have been saying they spend too much money. They've got too high of a cost per gram. They're burning crops, but they just kept growing. They kept getting bigger. They kept acquiring partners. So they kept getting bigger regardless. But on the street, there was a lot of people saying, whispering, Canopy growth's got problems. Canopy growth's got problems, but they're being masked by these billions they keep getting. They're being masked by all these huge partnerships. They're being masked by all these, you know, letters of intent, LOIs, joint ventures, all these deals they kept doing, the news, the news, the news, the revenue, the sales. So all of these things were masking the issues which were being swept underneath the rug and swept underneath the rug and swept underneath the rug. So now Constellation Brands comes in and they get a chance to see everything. There must have been something they didn't like about what he was doing. Yeah, exactly. But you know what? The sad thing is, is they're never going to tell us. <laughs> like it's, we're just stuck in this pure speculation land. They're never going to tell us. That's the shit part. Sorry, I swear. Um, we're never really going to know. It's just pure speculation and I hate it. I like truth transparency we'll never know we will never know what was said in that boardroom meeting and i can't even imagine what bruce was thinking but you could see today that uh, bruce was on a mission uh he was everywhere he was everywhere he was telling a story on cnbc he was telling a story on bnm bloomberg i'm sure he's going to be telling a story for the rest of his life and the funny thing is is I feel like Bruce comes out on top here because if Canopy Growth becomes a failure, Constellation Brands ends up having egg all over their face. Oh, absolutely. Well, I'm not getting in anytime soon because I don't, I'm so lost on what the future holds for them right now. Like, again, speculation. I'm totally, I'm lost between two sides. Like, maybe he took the phone. Maybe he left a blueprint. Maybe he took it with him. We don't know. So I think it's going to be like this year to tell, but I'm not touching it yet. I'm going to stay out for a bit. I think Constellation, <laughs> I think Constellation Brands made a big mistake. This is my opinion. 
Um, I don't know what happened behind the scenes, but I personally was going to buy Canopy Growth. I'm no longer interested in buying Canopy Growth. I think that it's a major mistake getting rid of a guy like Bruce Linton, who is pretty much the face of cannabis for the whole world right now. And you just got rid of the most eloquent, highest rated CEO in the sector that everybody else wants. So he leaves this as a champion. So he leaves with 18 million shares uh, with the reputation of a guy who took a company from Smith's Falls, Ontario to become a $20 billion company in six years, walks away with 18 million shares, which at 53 bucks is priced close to a billion dollars. So he walks away a billionaire with his head high knowing, hey, I took a small little company with an idea of going public one day and running a cannabis company. He said it. It was the worst business idea in the history of business ideas when I started. Right. And I'm leaving a billionaire, a guy who's turned people into millionaires all over the world, helped investors make millions of dollars all over the world, helped shareholders build shareholder equity, helped shareholders build shareholder value. And if Canopy Growth becomes a success, he wins. And if yeah. Canopy Growth fails, he wins. Because he can, look, he can look back and say, well, guess what? You failed because you got rid of me. Yes. So just for the record, then, Bruce, if you're watching this, if you're ever watching this, we still believe in you. Because <laughs> oh. that's really what it comes down to, honestly. I how could you how could you not believe in the guy that built the biggest cannabis company right. in the world? How could you not believe in that guy? I mean that's right. And wherever he ends up, I'll be sinking the money because <laughs> we already know the history. So I think my cash will follow him wherever he ends up. And, um, you know, my portfolio is becoming heavily influenced by U.S. legalization. So I hope he ends up somewhere over there with one of our faves. That would be nice. That would yeah. be really nice. Yeah. You know, it's funny because Bruce has been saying he doesn't want to do business in Canada for quite some time. I don't know if this was it. plotted or planned, but he's been saying that for quite some time. Now, all of a sudden, he reveals his cards and he's saying, hey, I can't do business in Canada anymore. But for quite some time, for months, he's been stating that Canada wasn't the market he was interested in. He kept stating that he wanted to focus on international. Now he gets to do that. Something tells me that maybe he knew this was coming. Maybe this was the plan from the beginning. I don't know. Of course, it, didn't come out of the, it just didn't come out of the blue. I'm sure, I'm sure he felt some kind of vibe. Like, he's not an idiot. He's a smart man. So... You know, he's not like he's choked on a personal level, it seems. But, you know, just even by by him, you know, talking about other opportunities, like he knows that he's got this still. Oh, but I'm so you take. OK, Kawhi Leonard is the best basketball player in the world. He just won an NBA championship. He's a free agent. Everybody wants him. That is Bruce Linton right now. He's yeah. a free agent. Everybody's going to want him. Because he made a very big statement. He made a very big statement. He's like, I raised $6 billion for this company. $6 billion for this company. If you're an, L an LP, if you're Xenobis, if you're Aurora Cannabis, if you're Afria, if you're Cura Leaf, if you're Kush Bottles, if you're IIPR, you're calling Bruce right now saying, Bruce, come on down to our city. Let's throw a party. It's time to celebrate, my friend. I got a position for you everybody's going to call Bruce because he can raise money. He's got all the bankers on speed dial. He's got all the relationships. He's got all the contacts. He's got all the, he's got everything you need to build the next cannabis giant. He's the guy. I hope he goes and visits Geneva because like, <laughs> oh. I'm in there and I need a little boost. <laughs> Bruce, go to Cali. Well, did you see Mar what did what did Martello do today after he was wearing their shirt? Did you see that? I don't know. No, no, no. He was wearing the he was wearing the Martello shirt in the interview. Did you see that? I saw that. I saw that. Okay, so let's pull up Martello. Let's see. Okay, do it. Let's see. I'm not on my computer. I'm stuck you on the phone since I'm Yeah, no worries. I'm gonna pull it up on richtvlive.com. Let's see. Martello Technologies Group, MTLO. He was wearing the shirt. It said Martello. Up 39% at 26 at 26 and a half cents, and it traded 6.5 million shares. You want to talk about a powerful man? 
This is the most powerful. This is the most powerful man in the cannabis world that just got fired from his own company that he built. Yeah, yeah, that's next level. <laughs> Thirty-nine percent. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I'm kind of bummed I went to sleep last night. I missed all that. Like, I just I just thought everything was just going to go awry. And I watched the market for, well, not even an hour, I think like 30 minutes. And I was like, oh, I can't even be part of this. I'm going to bed. <laughs> so I did. I missed everything. You know, you might have a bad day. You sleep through it. It's the same kind of thing. <laughs> so I didn't. Wow. That's nuts. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a crazy situation, you know. The guy's wearing a Martello T-shirt, and all of a sudden, Martello explodes up thirty nine percent and trades six point five million shares when it's never traded six point five million shares. That is a perfect indication of how much people believe in Bruce Wayne, <laughs> Bruce yeah. Linton. But I call him Bruce Wayne because this is the Superman of the cannabis sector. He is the guy. <laughs> The Superman of the cannabis sector who's been flying around for six years and telling the story as to why the cannabis sector is going to be the fastest growing best sector in the world and done a great job of it. He's not just a leader and a pioneer for cannabis growth. He is a leader and a pioneer for cannabis education, cannabis enthusiasts. Cannabis activism, cannabis legalization. Like this is the guy. He's the guy. Yes. And I feel bad for him. I feel bad for the industry. I feel bad for the sector. I feel like it's like a funeral today. You know, watching that video, watching that video, I felt like somebody died. He he, he referred to himself in third person. I know. I said that to Sherry. I'm like, my heart just was breaking for him. Like, you just felt, oh, uh, he was choked. Absolutely choked. He won't be for long. He's going to be laughing soon when all this, you know, when he gets his feels all under control. Because right now he just got slapped in the face hard. But when he realizes his value, like he's the Jacques Cousteau of cannabis. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. I'm just, he's a legend. I'm just, I'm just really interested to see where cannabis growth goes from here. Because apparently yes. the other CEO is going to be removed as well. So these guys have come in. Oh, yeah. So there's a temporary CEO. And there's an article that already came out saying that he will be removed as well. So they've got their own, they got their own guy they want to put in place. They want to shuffle the deck. They want to restructure the whole damn thing. They want to just clean house, right? I mean, this looks to me, this this reminds me of kind of what happened with. Uh, the Toronto Blue Jays. The Toronto Blue Jays brought in new management. They got rid of all their top players, all of the coaching staff, cleaned house, and now the Toronto Blue Jays suck. And they're starting from scratch. They got a bunch of good young players, but they're starting from scratch and the team sucks. I can't see how you get rid of your guy. All of your top, they're probably going to get rid of everybody. So you're going to get rid of all the directors, all the, you know, they're going to get rid of everybody and they're going to have all their guys. On the board. I and just had something pop in my head. Do you remember what happened when Namaste decided to start <laughs> firing people and crazy, you know? The, the, stock people? the stock tanked. Right. And it hasn't resurrected at all. What is that? Like 58 cents right now? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, should learn a lesson from that. Yeah, it's, it. it's it's concerning to me. It's concerning to me when you gut your company and you take away the guy that has all the working relationships and all of a sudden now you take over and you put a guy in place that doesn't have any of those relationships. Now he's calling everybody for the first time, building relationships with guys he has no relationships with and you're expecting it to just run perfectly and just keep making money like a machine and not have any growing pains. I can't see it. I just can't yeah, see I can't. it. I can't see it. I, how do you do that? Like if you were to get rid of me and just take over rich TV live, good luck. I, I just yeah, don't see. Where I'll go. Well, if where I'm gone go? and I'm rich TV, there is no rich TV. So it's like yeah. I'm rich TV. So you're gonna get rid of me? So you just got rid of Canopy Growth. Unless Canopy Growth runs by itself, this is the guy that was running the ship. This is the guy that was steering the ship. This is the guy that was making every single major decision. 
and now you just oust him, and now you're saying the next guy in line is being ousted too? So this, to me, is a giant that came in and said, you know what? We've got more money than everybody else. Why don't we just take over this company? My feeling is they plan on doing this since day one. They wanted to, to control this sector. They don't want to be underneath anybody's umbrella. They're a billion-dollar company. They're the biggest guy on the block. And the guy with the money makes the rules. That's the way it works. So they came in, and they planned this from day one. They structured it as such. Bruce thought they were coming in to be partners with him. But from day one, they planned to do this to Bruce. And that's what I felt from his interview today. And I thought that Bruce handled it with so much class. And the way he and, and the way he speaks is so eloquent and so impressive that he pretty much was on a job interview. Oh, hundred percent. Well, he obviously already got the job. <laughs> he was on a he was on B and M Bloomberg putting out his resume out there talking. And you know what? He did such a good job. He never said anything bad about them. He talked very highly about Rivers. He talked highly about Acreage. He talked highly about Canopy Growth. He talked highly about Martello, you know, obviously a company that's not affiliated to Canopy Growth, and a few other right. few other businesses that he's going to be partnering with. And he did mention that he's going to be working with other LPs outside of Canada. Right. So he's already got people blowing up his phone saying, Bruce, let's go, Bruce. So this is going to turn this billionaire into a multi-billionaire. I have no doubt he's going to bounce back and probably better than ever now. But I truly believe that they gave it to him and uh, with no Vaseline where he didn't want it. I really believe that. Unless he's the best, unless he's the best actor and he should be an actor in Hollywood. That is a man today who lost his soul. He realized he sold his soul to the devil. And he won, he thought these guys were his friends. He thought they were their his partners. He thought they were his allies. And in the end, they became uh, nothing more than guys that had a bunch of money that said, you know what? Um, we're bigger than you. We got more than you. You know, be happy with your billion dollars. And uh, thank you for the company, Bruce. Yeah, thanks for showing up. <laughs> Have a good life. Thank you for the Bye. biggest Bye. company. Bye. Thank you for the biggest company in the world, Bruce. And you know what? Because this happened, I say beware for all the other cannabis companies because the pharmaceutical guys are going to want to buy you out because they don't want the competition. No, and you know what? It's going to be crazy competition. But I still, I just want him to tell us today where he's going. Like, hurry up, figure out where the hell you want to work because my money needs to go somewhere. <laughs> you know? Honestly, I was, I wanted to buy some more last week and I didn't. And now I am so grateful because I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just so, so lost. But <sighs> wherever he goes, my money's following. That's legit. Like that's hundred percent happening. A lot of a lot of people a lot of people keep mentioning organogram. What is this relationship with organogram? What relationship? What are you talking about? A lot of people are mentioning Bruce and organogram. What is his relationship with organogram? If you guys know anything about this, can you guys drop it in the yeah. chat? I'd love to know what you guys know because. What is the relationship with Bruce Linton and Organogram? Because I've heard that from a few people that he's going to be working in some type of capacity with Organogram. But Organogram is in Canada. So once again, you know, he's got a non-compete in Canada. I'm sure of it. I'm sure there's a certain amount of years attached to that non-compete. Um, I don't know. I don't know exactly what's going to happen here, but there's definitely something up and there's definitely a lot of interest from everybody and I'm sure they're all calling him and you know, I'm sure he's saying to them, I can't work with you guys. I got a non-compete. So, you know, Bruce, if you're watching, we'd love to have you on our show. We'd love to have you tell your story to our community and we feel really bad about what happened and we know you're going to, you know, jump on your feet again. We will watch you very carefully. Martello technologies group was up 39% today. So clearly you have a ton of pull wherever you go. And I'm sure you're going to be a huge success wherever you land. And I'm sure you're going to land on both feet. Um, if it was weird and I thought it was, uh, it was quite telling when he said, this isn't good for Bruce and it's a sad day for Bruce. And he referred to himself in third person. And I thought, wow, um, this is interesting. 
You know, this is a man who. Yeah, I thought that weird when he made that statement as well. I'm like, what does he mean? This is a sad day for Bruce. Like, this would be a sad day for me. And I was like, oh, man. But you know what? He'll absorb this. He needs to just go maybe smoke a little of his uh, non canopy product and, uh, <laughs> and chillax a bit because life is going to get a lot better for him. And I'm following him. Yeah, for sure. Well, you know what? Thank you so much for getting your input. Um, I personally won't be buying this stock. I don't really appreciate what they did to him. So I'm personally going to just boycott the stock. I don't even care how high it goes. I don't like the way they do business. I don't like the ethics behind this decision. So I'm personally going to boycott this stock. Um, I just, I don't care. I'll, I'll invest in something else. Uh, regardless of how high it goes, I don't like the way they do business. And being a guy who has followed the cannabis sector uh, for two and a half years and has been talking to people about canopy growth. Um, I'll continue to cover canopy growth. I just personally, I'm not going to buy it ever again. I don't feel good about the company. I will not support this type of behavior. I don't think this is what the entire sector is about. I think the sector is about, you know, having fun, making money. It's about, you know, uh, legalization. It's about having freedom. It's about changing the world. It's about saving lives. And this just kind of puts a, 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 a real it puts a real ugly twist to the sector where we now are in the real business of doing business this is no longer about you know uh legalization and decriminalization and having fun and love and peace and harmony and smoking weed and love your brother and love your sister this is about real business big business and when you do business with big business and corporate america starts getting involved you need to be aware of the danger. And this shows that when you drop the ball and you're not paying attention to the details and you take a risk of giving too much control to the wrong people, you can lose everything, including, including the same company that you built. The same company that you built with your own blood, sweat, and tears could be gone tomorrow if you give too much control to the wrong people. Exactly. You got to keep that 51% in your pocket, <laughs> you know, 51% in your pocket. I just really hope for gotta be, um, that they don't become namaste. That is my fear. And like I said, I'm still processing, I'm still processing what's going to happen, but I'm definitely not putting my money there right now. That's for sure. And I hope for all the shareholders out there that they don't have a, a namaste deja vu, but it's, it's possible. Well, like I said, you know, I hope it goes to 400 bucks. A lot of people have said it will, you know, but like I said, I personally won't buy the stock. Um, I think there's much better opportunities out there right now with companies that I believe have better ethics. And I think that this shows their true colors, the people that have gotten involved here. And I just don't like the ethics involved behind this decision. I don't think that they really made a very good calculated decision here. However, they may come up with some news to explain themselves. I think that that would be a good move. I would like to see yeah, someone from the company that. explain this decision. Uh, they've yeah. allowed him to come up personally first and explain himself, which I think was a well, mistake. He said, and I agreed. I agreed to the press. So they've asked him to. So, yeah, it's time for them to come on and tell, them, tell their story. 100%. We're ready to listen. Yeah, I just, yeah. like I said, I won't support it. I won't buy it. There's plenty of other companies out there. I hope they go up for the sector, but I just don't believe in doing business the way that they did business. And I'm just a very loyal person. So when stuff like this happens, it leaves a very sour taste in my mouth because I just feel like this sector grew up today. Today, this sector grew up. The sector became very real today. Yeah. You know, the sector today became... The sector today became very real. It became very business-like. It became very Wall Street. And we got a very... Yeah, I was just going to say that. We got a very yeah. big reminder. We got a very big reminder of who makes the rules. And at the end of the day, in any business, the, the man and the woman who has the money makes the rules. And today, Constellation Brands prove that to founder, ex-CEO... Bruce Linton, the biggest and the most powerful person in the entire cannabis industry, one of the first billionaires in the cannabis sector, 
and a man who's generated and created more wealth, I would say, than anybody in the cannabis sector has now been released of his duties for growing his business too big, too fast, raising money, and then taking money from the guys that were his so-called infusion of capital. And then they just decided to kick him to the curb because he was spending too much of the money that he brought in. We still believe in you, brother. We still believe. So let's just see what happens. Watch and see. But yeah, yeah, I'm not touching it yet. Hey, I'll um, no. We'll see what next year brings. But I'm the more the longer I process this, and since we had this conversation, I totally see a namaste happening here. I wasn't. I mean, when we first started talking, I was still just like, oh, poor Bruce. <laughs> now I'm thinking, oh, it's gonna be a shit show. I believe Bruce mentioned that uh, Constellation Brands owned about uh, 38% of the company with an option to own up to 51%. So I'm assuming they're going to exercise that option now. They're going to take over control of the company and they're just going to run it the way they anticipated they were going to run it from day one. And I think this was their plan from day one. They're a big conglomerate. They didn't want to have to answer to anybody. Now they've got their own cannabis sector. They're in. They're huge in the in the in the beverage business. Now they've got CBD product. They've got hemp product. They've got cannabis product. And they don't got to answer to nobody. They are the kings of the court. Uh, they just essentially ran a coup on the CEO and just took over his business. And now they are the biggest company in the world with more money than anybody in the world. And they believe they can do it without him. And, you know, let's see if they can do it. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. I mean, they do have a footprint. And if they can grow it, all the power to you. And they do have a footprint. And thank you to Bruce for making that footprint. But we'll see what they do with it. Let's see. But I think it was a pretty shitty time to do a restructuring, honestly. Not so smart. Yeah, but, I know it's uh, going to be interesting. I feel bad for Bruce. Like I said, Bruce, we'd love to have you on Rich TV Live to get your story so our community can hear directly from you. Uh, we feel really bad about what happened, and we wish you all the best of luck. Amanda, thank you so much for getting your input today. Uh, you're always a wealth of knowledge and information. I know you made five grand on Xena. Congratulations. You're in and out quick. Uh, Thanks. Took the day off today, and I didn't even care. Yeah, well... <laughs> You just, des yeah. you deserve it. You deserve it. And you know, it's funny because when it was going to 223 and people were asking me, should I sell? I kept saying to people, if you're upsell, because that's always been, have I always said that Amanda, when you're upsell, right? Like this is, this is what we do, right? So I'm not here to tell you when to buy or sell, but when you see profits, take them. And then obviously Xena has come back now back to around a dollar 80 range next week. I will be loading up and positioning myself for a long ride. So stay tuned. We'll keep you guys updated. Congratulations on your success on Xena and let's keep finding yeah. those winners and let's try to collaborate again soon. Yeah, we will. Have an awesome day. Great chat. And uh, Bruce, stay strong. You're still the man. Jacques Cousteau. So have a great day, everyone. Thanks for coming out. Thank you, Amanda. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. That is Amanda from Indonesia giving us her two cents on canopy growth. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys for joining us. I feel saddened for Bruce. I really hope, Bruce, you're going to be okay. Um, you know, the best advice I can give you, Bruce, I've built businesses that have been taken from me before, and I'm sure you have too. You did mention that. The best advice I could give you, Bruce, is you've done it before. You can do it again, my friend, and I'm sure you will, and you will do it better and bigger and smarter and stronger. So congratulations on all your success, Bruce. I know it's hard. I'm sure it's a very tough pill to swallow, but at the end of the day, everything happens for a reason, and now maybe you should take a nice vacation, enjoy some of your wealth, and come back, like I said, bigger, better, stronger, and... We need you in this industry. We need you in this sector. So please continue to be a part of this sector because we need you. And like I said, we'd love to have you here on Rich TV Live. And we just wish you the best of luck. And thank you for everything you've done. And we will continue to cover your story. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you guys for being here. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. If you like this video, smash the like button. 
Comment down below. Share the video everywhere. This is your boy Rich from Rich TV Live. We bring the news. We break it down. We analyze it. We get interactive with the community. Today I interviewed Bev Canna, CCO, Chief Communications Officer, Emma Andrews. Stay tuned to that video. They were up today too. Martello was up. Bev Canna was up. There's a lot of stocks that are moving. The S&P 500 broke a record today. Like the S&P 500 keeps, keeps going higher. And with an election year coming, November 2020, I predict that the market just keeps getting bigger and better for like the next, what? The next 17 months we have until the election of 2020, where Bruce Linton in his interview with BNN, which I put out there, predicted that marijuana and cannabis would be decriminalized, would be legalized by elections 2020. So stay tuned. This is your boy Rich from Rich TV Live, and I'm out. Peace.